<laughs> Yo, somebody asked me to do some wild shit with that before. He a DJ at the Swingers Party. <laughs> DJ Moss. He the DJ at the Swingers Party. Yes, sir. You can pick up. which one you want, cause you got to go DJ tonight at the Swingers Party. It's gonna be an orgy, corgy with Georgie Porgy with a pudding pie. I'm telling no lie. What you want? That's your camera. Okay. DJ Morris, he got a DJ tonight at the orgies. <laughs> People having sex all over the room, but they need some tune so they can know what to do next. Hire a DJ and hit her with a pretty pretty while she getting hit with that. <laughs> <laughs> got a DJ tonight at an orgy. <laughs> I gotta play a track list while people are having sex. <laughs> what songs do they want to hear? She got a dick in her face, she got a dick in her ear. I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? A mama gonna be mad and shit if he was stuck behind a DJ. At the orgy. Niggas on that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we got the two for one drinks. <laughs> and take a break, because the room's starting to stink. Hold on. <laughs> hey, man, welcome back. The black market is open. That's how we get down over here at the trap, man. It's still the trap. Even though this is the black market, it's the trap. we're in the trap, bro. Anything subject to happen, man. First of all, gotcha. welcome to the trap, DJ Mars. I can't believe it took you this long to get over here, man. Man, if they just knew the history, bro, we, DJ Mars on the low. We planted the seeds to make this shit happen, bro. They don't know that, bro. Man. Like the test episodes, yeah. the test joints. <laughs> this is my original co-host right here. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. No, fuck that. Because without us doing that, yeah. we would have never figured out to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, respect. And it's like those days we spent in the studio, mm. man, we knew we was on to something. You just didn't know where it was going to end up. Exactly, yeah. Mundo, bruh. First of all, welcome to the trap again, uh, formally. Mm -hmm. Man, we've been over here cooking it up, and man, we know you in the city cooking it up, and shit everywhere cooking it up, man. Give them a brief rundown, the background first, before we get into all the shit you're doing now. Oh, man, what decade do you want to start in? I know that sounds old, but you want to start in the, the 80s? 80s? No, what was you doing in the 80s, DJ Mars? <laughs> start in the 80s. Was so, yeah, this is going to sound <laughs> extremely old. I know we, you know we focus on age and demographics. I bought my first record in 1982. Okay, bet. It was Planet Rock. That was the rock, very, rock, Planet, Planet Rock. Uh -huh, the very first Don't record. Don't stop. I bought it from Main Music in Springfield, Massachusetts. That's my hometown. Springfield, I, Massachusetts. I, I stole the $1.99 or 99 cent that it cost for the record from my mom's. You know, back in the day, moms had a big pocketbook. Right. You go in there, you take the money out the I pocketbook. I ain't never went in my mom's pocketbook. I'm telling you myself. You bold as fuck, <laughs> bro. You probably one of the only surviving black children <laughs> that has ever safely gone in their mother's pocketbook. I guess the type of shit they let y'all do in Springfield, Massachusetts. <laughs> I ain't never even heard of no niggas living in Massachusetts. I got $5 for any nigga here in this room that can spell Massachusetts out loud without looking at it. Nobody even Nobody looked up. Even <laughs> funny. I'm gonna spell no goddamn Mass Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, what yeah. was it like growing up in that, like, as a black dude? It was, it was cool, so... When, when I tell people that's where I'm from, the first thing they say, is there black people in Massachusetts? I tell it's this a is gang on the street. Black people you will get robbed quicker in Massachusetts than you would in, let's say, a, a New York. Obviously, I don't know that to be fact, but what I'm saying is it's wild there. Yeah. Like, when you got your wild pockets, and then you got your, your, your suburban pockets. So what it did, it taught me a little bit about everything because you had some friends, right. black, white, whatever, who grew up rich, and then on the other side, you had some friends, black, white, whoever, who 
grew up poor. So you, you saw what the world really was. Yeah, and it was diversity. Yeah, it was small enough so your parents let you out the house so you can experience, but big enough so you saw what it did. Like, so when I say saw what it did, I grew up, and I don't even like talking about this, but I grew up in the crack era. Like, I saw before it started, and then it went swipe through my city. I saw that. I saw a kid, Travis Best, who graduated from a high school that went on to the NBA. NBA. He played, he went Pacers, to Georgia right? Tech, went to Pacers. He, he, he retired in the NBA. So, so when I say you saw everything, like I literally saw everything. And it, it, it made it so that in terms of who I am, um, DJ-wise and personality-wise, I was well-rounded because I saw all shapes of it. That's what I was getting life. ready to ask you. Like, mm-hmm. having that wide range of people and friends and, and stuff around you, like, mm-hmm. what type of music did these people, like, introduce you to? That we know that you might not have got. Just so being, you know. We didn't have a V103 right. in, in Massachusetts. We had WHYN, and they used to play the Doobie Brothers, Linda Ronstadt, uh, uh, Hall and Notes. Okay. Like, so we had, we had. Well, that. Hall and Notes, that's funk, though. That's, that's some funky that's, ass that's, white boys. Yeah, but that's, that's what we had, right? And then we had college radio who, extremely day parted, two hours a day, you would hear um, hip hop, but it wouldn't be the same two hours every day. So on Monday, it'd be two to four. On Tuesday, it would be four to six. On Wednesday, it'd be 3 a.m. to f- to 5 a.m. It was extremely Who day the fuck party. up at 3 a.m.? But it was college radio. Oh. So college radio back then was extremely uh, organic and it was extremely experimental. So after your hip-hop show, it would be acid rock. Before that, it would be roots reggae. So we really grew up listening to everything. And it kind of made me, from a DJ's perspective, it made me a better DJ because... I mean, I, could, I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin, at the same time listening to Ultra Magnetic and De La Soul and Public Enemy. Right. So all the reason why my crates are as deep as they are is because that's how I grew up. Right, I didn't right, just right. grow up listening to just Luther Vandross. As a kid, I wish I did because, you know, you're fishing through the radio for Run DMC and it didn't happen. Right. So Luther lost me with that whole dance with my father shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it fuck. <laughs> I ain't never heard a nigga say that. Was that? Skinny Luther? That was one of his last albums. Yeah, this nigga made an album Luther. called Dance With My Father. I was like, what the fuck? God bless his dad, Luther. God bless his dad. I mean, I love Luther. <laughs> but I ain't got to like everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that one threw me all the way off. <laughs> I wasn't even really all the way in my adulthood. And I was like, what? <laughs> you didn't get it. I looked at my dad. I was like, don't you ever try to dance with you? What <laughs> 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 type of shit is that? Yeah, this dude's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. So that's that's what happened in the eighties. You just discovering all this dope ass shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what what led you to the DJing? It was a it was a neighborhood thing. So the neighborhood that I grew up in, I felt like was the coolest neighborhood in the city. That's that's just how I felt. We probably weren't, but that's everybody how I felt. feel like they neighborhood the coolest. So one. legitimately, we had one of the best graffiti writers in the city. He lived he lived down the block. So I lived on Hickory the projects in Hickory Street. He lived on Eastern Ave, like literally on the corner. So so you got the best graffiti writer in the city. Um, one of my neighbors a few houses down was a DJ and there was another DJ at the top of the projects who I would stand in front of the bus stop and he's cutting up break beats. So I felt like that's what I was around naturally. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was going to be this. I didn't know that this was even available for people outside of New York because I legitimately thought the only way you can get on is if you lived in New York because you would see Run DMC with Jam Master J. You would see uh, uh, LL Cool J with Cut Creator. And I, so I thought that uh, the DJ got on because he lived across the street from the rapper. I didn't live across the street from the rapper. Mm. What's my DJ's name? Yo, Cut, Cut Creator! So, it, you know, that's I thought that was the trajectory. Yeah. But that's dope, man. You really got to take your whole dreams and DJing aspirations to a whole nother level and work with some legends in the city, man. Yeah. How, how you how you go from Springfield, Massachusetts to Atlanta, Georgia? 
Um, it was college, Clark Atlanta University. Okay. That, that was the that was the reason that brought me to the A. Yeah, I was just throwing the HBCU. <laughs> bro, <laughs> you know, we, the we always got to show love to the. Nah, it was honestly that was the that was the plug. So, came down here in '91 to go to college. I was um, graduated, but in school I was majoring in communications, and I wanted to um, create content for TV, kind of like what your crew is doing. Yeah. Inspired Cause by... Because this is the number one black TV show that's not on day, TV. All day. Not on TV, but... Not on TV. It's going to be. You yeah. already know that. So I was inspired by Spike Lee and Arsenio Hall. Arsenio, obviously, for his late night talk show, yeah. and then the stuff that Spike was doing with his films. I, I felt like that talked to me directly. And I knew Spike went to... Morehouse, but he took his classes at Clark. So I was like, well, I'll just go directly to the source. I'll take my classes at Clark. So that's what got me to the A. Mm -hmm. Hey, Carlos Miller here. Guys, how long do you expect her to stay if you aren't satisfying her sexually? It won't be long. She probably cheating on you right now with her work husband. Get you some Blue Chew today and leave her speechless. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. The first step is simple. Visit BlueChew.com, then consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. So if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code BLACK at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code BLACK to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. How you get to working with people like Outkast and shit like that, man? So <clears throat> the Outkast story is crazy. So my man, Sean Johnson, introduced me to Outkast. This is when they were both in high school, all right? Both of them was in high school. And one day he picks me up. Me and, so me and DJ Trauma at the time were roommates. And um, he picks me up. He's like, yo, I'm going to take you over to meet these rappers. They're, they're really dope. This is, let's say, 92, 93. So we pull up to this house. Walk in the house, there's an older black woman in the kitchen cooking. We say hi, and we go downstairs. So you walk down, this is God's honest truth. You walk downstairs, and you see a bunch of guys sitting over there, somebody laying on the floor, someone over there, and then you see this skinny, dark-skinned cat, I guess, like, behind, behind the, the, the booth. And um, it's Rico Wade. Now, I, I don't know who I'm looking at, because this is the first time I'm walking into the house, but it's the dungeon, right? So... I don't remember what they were recording, but this is Dungeon before Outkast got signed to LaFace. It was whatever that year was. So let's say, it, for argument's sake, let's say it's 93, right? They're, again, they're still in high school, 93, and the whole Dungeon is forming, right? So I'm sitting there talking to Rico, and Rico is legitimately like the visionary. But I mean, we, we talked hip hop for hours. And I felt like they were, they were the same as me in terms of hip hop knowledge, history. I mean, we're, we're talking everything. We're talking break beats. We're talking Africa Bambada. These are dudes I'd never met before, but the, 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 I knew that they knew what time it was. Right, right. It, 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 I don't care where, it didn't even matter where they were from. You knew that they knew, and then you knew that Rico was the head because he was forming a crew like Voltron. Now, again, I didn't know, let's say there's six bodies sitting over there. I didn't know that these two outcasts and these four were Goody Mob. I just knew that they were rappers that this genius was putting together. So imagine seeing Dungeon Family from, that's, not the beginning, but this is before Outkast got a record deal. Like, so I've been in that space, in around Atlanta history from, and let's say that was my starting point. Mm -hmm. in, in, incredible. And then only to find out, I go home for the summer, come back, Outkast got a record deal with a face. And I'm like, these are the cats who I used, used to kick it with. They used to come to our crib, rhyme in the, um, in our living room. I wish we had social media back then because it was some real, history, I, when one of them dyed their hair blonde, and I don't remember who, so I don't want to mess up the story. One of them dyed their hair blonde, and their moms kicked them out the house. I've, 
I picked up whoever the one was, I picked up the other one to pick up the one who got kicked out the crib to bring them to the other one's house. Like, so seeing them from that vantage point from day one, you knew they were nice on a hip hop level from like, there was no marketing plan. No, these two high school kids was bananas with it. So, you know, that's, the genesis of my history of hip hop in, here in Atlanta. Man, you got a lot of history though. Carlos Miller here. Look, man, this pandemic got everybody hurting in more ways than one. Take control of your debt with our sponsor, PDS Debt. PDS Debt rolls all of your payments into one low 0% interest monthly payment. PDS is so confident they can save you money, they're giving our listeners with eligible accounts. $25 gift card. Yeah, I said it. PDS is offering $25 Visa gift cards to our listeners with eligible accounts just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com forward slash black. Listen, everybody's not going to get a $25 gift card. If you qualify and your account is eligible, then they will send you a $25 gift card. Don't call them people acting the fool about no money that you did not qualify for. So go to pdsdebt.com forward slash black and see if you qualify for the gift card. On the, in the history of Atlanta, I done heard a few people shout you out at their verses and shit like that recently. Thank you, I mean, thank you. We did, um, the Monica verses, which was crazy. I think to this day, I think that's top five highest rated verses of, of all of them, which is bananas. Because you're in a room like this, right? And you're not you're not knowing that the that the numbers are going through the roof. And we were, let's say, 30% through the show, and the producer came over and was like, yo, y'all broke a record. And I'm literally we're in a room like this. You don't know that the record is being broke. You're not even paying. I'm just making sure that we start Monica's records on point. Then he's like, no, 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 you're at, I'm paraphrasing the number because I don't remember it. Let's say he's like, we're almost at 2 million. I was in there. <clears throat> Cra crazy. Yeah, I was in there. <laughs> I was in the comments talking so much shit. <laughs> what, what you talking about? Bro, you know the comments was going crazy because yeah, Monica yeah. had them boots on that looked like prosthetic legs. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the best ones, bro. Like, I, man, people love to see, you know, our stars finally getting their flowers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I, I, I love it. I feel like um, Atlanta has been on top longer than any other city has been on and top. And you've been here the whole time. Bro, this is going to have to take us like five episodes to get through all the <laughs> shit you did. I'll switch, switch my shirts. I'll come back. Fuck the shirts, man. <laughs> that's, how, that's how gangster we are in this motherfucker, man. Fuck switching. <laughs> We're just going to keep the cameras on until we leave this motherfucker, man. <laughs> so what you got going on right now, man? I know you've been going crazy with the cars. I got. I want to skip straight to that part because that's my favorite you know, how car. How many cars do you have? <laughs> uh, shit. We don't, we don't say numbers and stuff. Things like I'm that. Like, we got We got to We got We'll never be walking. Yeah, I'll like, never be walking. I'll never walk anywhere. <laughs> so. so I got the Uptown Car Club. Um, uh, it's really. Uh, what I got to have to be in the Uptown Car Club? So the Uptown Car Club focuses on cars primarily from the 80s and 90s. Obviously, you know, we're going to stretch it out because, you know, time is moving on. But 80s and 90s European style whips for the most part. I'm about so, to get some then. Yeah, I've been I, wanting I, to get me a little five speed in anyway. So if you know anybody got an M3, mm -hmm. Coach, manual. Coach K got. I can't, no, 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 no. Coach <laughs> shit, Coach shit is, Coach got some shit that's immaculate. I remember because of his birthday, they got him that cold ass BMW. Man, Migos bought it for him, right? Maybe the label, maybe uh, QC. Somebody, 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 yeah. somebody at the label yeah. made sure that, because I remember them um, when they shipped it to Atlanta. Because I got the call a couple times before they found the actual one. Like, mm -hmm. Los, you got one? I was like, hell no. You know how much that bitch is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Yo, know, so the cool thing about cars, you know, the way we're doing the car thing is you don't got, coach's level is another level, right? Coach been killing it for so long. Yeah. On the lower, he like, he don't fuck with none of that. A lot of people won't even know coach if they walk past yeah, him. Yeah, But he's, he's so just cool. been, he's so low key with the shit. So his is like gotta executive get him up here, level. Man. Gotta get him up here. Definitely that. And then, but you can enter the, the old school car game 
with like five thousand dollars, and I'm not saying five thousand dollars <laughs> is a little bit of money. Stop but lying to these people. No, you can't. No, you, you can't. can't. Yeah, you can't. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can buy it. You can own it for that, but you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Come so on, Mars. See, that's why 100. people end up with all these fucking cars and broken dreams. Because you really <laughs> believe that shit. No. If you buy an old car, you need enough money to make that bitch a new car. Yeah, you need, I'm, I'm saying to buy the car. <laughs> yeah, you, you can own it. You can own it. You can own it. So you can get in it. You can find you a nice late model 90s era Benz or, or with some uh, turbo on it. Yeah, you're right. You could, but I mean, then, obviously it's an investment. You got to put into it. You got to put into it. You got to. You got to. I'm gonna ride with you. It. I'm gonna get me some. It's got to be a five speed though. Mm, it, see, I don't. I don't like driving six automatic. I'm not a speedster. I'm not a speedster. So I'm not on a highway going a million miles an hour. No, uh, I'm 400 going 150. Ah, uh, <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> I'm about to start a class just teaching people how to drive sticks. Man. That's <laughs> no, I can, my first car was a stick. I had an 86 Dodge Lancer. That was my very you first You had a Lancer? Dodge Lancer. Turbo at that. Automatic. Great. I don't, the turbo didn't make it go faster because it was already old when I got it, but it was an 86 Dodge Lancer mm. turbo. Bought it from an auction for $2,500. Mm. You know, it's crazy. I had a car just like that, but I had, you know, Dodge Plymouth, they made the same shit. Mm. I had the Plymouth Laser, mm -hmm. which is the same fucking car. Essentially. Exactly. Is, mine was a big ass brick. <laughs> mine was, my shit was probably a. Uh, 88, but when I bought it, it was so low mileage and so immaculate. I just I couldn't even drove tell shit out of miles it. I, had on it. I was so mad when I first got it because I came home and I was like, because I was saving up to buy a car, so mm. the car I had it like in my mind, and then I got this one, but like it wasn't, I didn't pick it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'll drive, fuck it, whatever. I'm just trying to roll at this point. Mm -hmm. I go out there and I start, to, I'm looking about to start, like, no, it's a stick. I'm like, fuck. I went in the house, I was like, shit, how am I gonna do this? I was like, you'll figure it out. So I went back outside that same night, drove that bitch. I got stuck for like 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but I, I got stuck for like 15 minutes. Uh -huh. And then I figured that shit out. And then like, I did that shit maybe. Two more nights just driving when I got home, mm -hmm. drove that bitch to school, and I was and like, good. man, I'm Gucci. Good money, good money. Yeah, man. Taught so myself. The, the car thing is every man needs their thing, right? right? Every man needs a thing. So for some, you know, I do sneakers, I do firearms, cars. And, and bikes. We all, you, you need a hobby. When you right. come off the road, you need something to take you away from this to, you know, to relax. You got a lot of hobbies, man. You do cars, firearms, and you build bikes. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. When you find time to mix it all up. The days that I'm not in the clubs or yeah. not on the road, like really it's my relaxation yeah. tool. You, you know what I mean? To, to get away from. See, they ain't know you was a gun enthusiast like that. Bro, it's the South. <laughs> you got to protect yourself. Yeah. Got to. Even before the nonsense with the last president, like, I was on that heavy. Like One thing they yourself. love in the South, though, man, that's some guns mm -hmm. and some Jesus. <laughs> and they, they take turns. It depends Both. on where you are. It's at. the same situation. So, so on the tip of the bikes, you know, that's my newest public venture. Right. It's made by Mars. Um... So I customize bikes for, for people. So, you know, you can either buy a factory bike. We or got one. Dad, we, you that? got our bike? Yeah. We got some, oh. man, let me see it. I'm gonna, I gotta show Mars. I wanna get his opinion. We um, had another guy come who built bikes, black dude, entrepreneur. Dope, dope, so dope. we got a little. What's his name? God damn it, Mars. <laughs> <laughs> True question, true question, true question. Nah, we'll get his name, but he's, he's pretty dope. We're gonna get him to finish the finish deal. But right now, we just got it as like, Art. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get them to complete it. We gotta get a DJ Mars bike, 85 yeah. South thing. That 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 colorway, the the black with the orange and the blue. OG colorway. I mean, we'll go OG. Yeah, we'll go yeah. red, red, white, and red, blue. Red, white, and blue. Yeah. Dope. Yeah, so we need one. The, the the bike thing, I started at. Um, I was diagnosed with diabetes, let's say about eight years ago. So the doctor was like, "Yo, you gotta lose some weight." So. I'm not a gym person. I'm not going to be in the gym lifting, running. So I figured I needed to do something to, to get some exercise in. Check that out. Ooh. Super light frame, too. Who's going to ride this? This is my shit. Nice. Nice. Yeah. My shit. I got to get back in touch with him. He got the rest of the parts to finish it. He just got to come up here and do it. 
So I like I like obviously the Atlanta theme with the with right. the can they see it on this side? The yeah. peach, obviously the 85 South. This and is we the, on fire. You see the smoke and the flames. On. We got our goons right here. <laughs> the killers. Yeah, we got the killers on there, bitch. We got the A-Town. Dope. Come on, man. Dope, dope, cool. Quit touching shit. You see it? Leave it alone. You know Leave it. Leave down there on the chain. 85. Thing. We just, uh -huh. we're just building I'm over on here, the top man. Two. And what's this right here? That's his name, JRS Custom Bicycles. Yeah, JRS. Boom. Shout out to my dog. We're going to get you up here to finish this for me. So, yeah, it, it was really born out of necessity. I, I needed to, to oh, my bad. Take it back. I needed to lose weight. Yeah. So I just started riding bikes um, around the city. I, I saw Jay Reed and the Dope Peddlers. Their crew is ridiculous. Yeah. And then I started my crew. Then I, I bought... Um, a second bike and was like, let me flip. You know, it's hip hop. Right. We don't like things to stay stationary. We, we you know, remix it into our own thing. Yeah. And then I did my bike. And I did I did that bike and then I did two more for myself and posted a picture of it. And this kid from England said he wanted to buy it. Just word to my son. I named him a price. He, he wired the money. I shipped him the bike. Two weeks later, he had a bike he posted and someone else was like, who did that bike? I want to buy one from them, too. And that's legitimately how the business started. That's what's up, man. Um, tell me more about the gun classes and the, and the handguns and oh, things man. of that nature. It, it, so Vault ATL, um, really just about understanding uh, the importance of gun safety and education. That, exactly. that's, before you get a gun, you need to know how to use it. That, that, when that projectile, when that bullet comes out, that thing is another conversation. A lot of us around the way have guns, but we don't know how to use them. So, you know, we put ourselves in bad situations. We may carry a gun, a situation someone may approach you at a gas station, and if he turns around, you shoot him. While he's turned around, now you're at fault. So what we just try to teach, gun education, so that when we're in a situation, we make the proper decision. Mm. A lot of times we put ourselves in these predicaments and we don't do the legal thing. We do what our emotions are telling us. We can't move like that. And so Vault is about making sure we know what time it is. I'm coming. Bet. I'm coming. Well, shit, man. Drop your social media, DJ Mars. Hey, Let them man. know where they can um, find you at, man. DJ Mars 404 on Instagram and Mars Hall on uh, Facebook. Do me a favor, though, man. Right. Make me a promise. De don't let this be the last time you stop through here. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, your team know how to find me. I love I these dudes. We've been talking about getting you up know, here for the longest, man. Schedules, schedules. I'm so glad we were able to do this today. So if they need more information about the bikes, the guns, the DJing. Nah. Everything. I mean, I, gen my general page is at DJ Mars 404. I post everything there. Right. Cars, bikes, firearms, everything right there. Parties, tours, all of that. Well... There you have it, folks. I hope everyone who's watching knows and understands that the black market is, is open. <laughs> yep. The black market is open. My bad, I got excited, DJ Mars. I'm sorry. This shit makes me happy, DJ Mars. <laughs> hey, man, we got DJ Mars in the building with us today. 85 South Show, Black Market. We out of here. My dog. Yo, that, I didn't realize that was your intro. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were just rapping in the beginning. That's how we.